OK, well, we're all set to go. The boys' masters final, Korea versus Finland. Guanji versus Pur Perharinen of Finland. And it'll be the Korean to go first. Guanji, who has already picked up a gold medal in the boys' doubles earlier today. And uh, if you're just joining us, 30 points, 30 pins scored. If you get a strike, and that's exactly what he does to get the scoreboard ticking over. Guanji sets an early pace, maximum scored. So the young Finn, let's see how he fares with his first throw of the day. Hasn't had that extra time, remember, on the lanes, just the warm up ahead of this five minutes. So in that sense, Guanji does have a little advantage and can read that Montreal 41 oil pattern pretty well, but the Finn replies strong. And he gets off to the perfect start as well. Andy Penny joins us back in the commentary box for this one. Andy, welcome back. Scene set very nicely for this one. It's Korea versus Finland. Anything that you can pick from these early stages or even perhaps the warm-up that might lead us as to who is going to take the advantage here? Well, we have two powerhouses of world bowling here and the two-handed exponent from Finland and a single-handed left-hander from Korea, as we know, has been very dominant so far. It's very early stages and we just have to wait and see how the Finn adapts to this lane. As you said, Korean has already had some time on there, so he started out pretty well with strike. Let's see how he goes on this shot. Chance to take an early lead as well if he can pick up another strike here. Korean having left a couple of pins. Rinen for Finland lets it go. Double handed and right into the slot found its form, found its direction, and a strike there in the second. Didn't quite get the angle that he was looking for to get the kicker onto the seven pin. Now you'll know the answer to this one, Andy. Does size matter? So a tall, I would say slightly leaner looking Finn against a, a more stocky looking Korean. Do those shapes and body sizes matter in the sport of bowling? No, is the short answer. <laughs> I'll and leave it there then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? Well, it's actually down to the fast twitch muscles that you'd have in your forearm. The Korean guy definitely has a strong release with a high twitch, fast twitch muscle there. The two-handed technique has come around, so you don't actually, if you don't have that fast twitch muscle in your forearm, forearm, sorry, you can develop a very strong release two-handed. That's why this two-handed release is very dominant right now. And there is Guanji who faltered in the second frame. Can he get back on target here in the third? No is the answer. It's taking a while to settle in. Looks a little rocked up there. It really is about managing the nerves. They're playing in front of a live TV audience here, being watched around the world, being watched by a couple of hundred fans here as well in the judo, the Institute the Judo coming to you live from Paris. And Marina lets that one go to pick up the spare. So that was the best he could do from that situation. Takes his score to 79 after three frames. Yeah, the Korean needs to spare this one to stay in touch. There he goes. It'll do, but you can already see a bit of a dent in the score line there. Just 56 for Jun Ji. Viewers will also notice that players alternate between lanes, between the left and the right lane, as we look at it here from our commentary box behind our bowler's arm. And what difference might that make alternating between the two lanes? Well, the idea is that if there is any small difference in the oil pattern on either lane, then when you alternate lanes, then nobody gets an unfair advantage. Double-handed release again, tries to find the pocket, gets a little assistance there. It could have been a lot worse. Yeah, he had a lucky escape just to leave one standing. On stage, it looked like there might be three or four. Still a half chance for Guanji. 
in it goes, just like that. Yep, he's made a correction and started striking again. Both these countries have very um, high level training facilities. Finland uh, has the Kortana, their Olympic training center. The bowling is part of the Olympic program there. Both these guys were trained very hard for this event. Perinen converts there, gets the spare. See, the coach is able to get on a little bit of advice there to their players during the game. What, what sort of things can you say to your players? Well, the coach can see the ball go down the lane. The players generally only see the ball for two thirds of the shot, but the players, uh, sorry, the coach can see it for the whole shot, whole distance down the lane, and he can make some suggestions to adjustments that they can make. But at the end of it all, it's down to the players. They still have to make the shot. Lovely shape on that last throw from Guan Ji. Started it really far left, the left-hander. Got the bite that it needed, the turn. He's back in this game. Best of three, so first the two games wins. Verinen. Needs something big here. Oh, under delivers. Slightly takes the edge and the pressure off Guan Ji. You can just watch the Finn finish up here. Currently on 106. And a slightly different scoring. 30 points for a strike. 10 pins for a spare plus the pinfall of the first shot in the frame. And there is the spare. Best he could do from that situation. Yes, the current frame scoring system does make every match very exciting, can lead to some very big finishes in the 10th frame. It's good for everybody to understand, very easy to understand. Big scores as well, we've seen some big scores this Exactly, week. yep. But still a maximum of 300 that's the most you can get the perfect game scores are tied at the moment yes 300 is still the maximum Puharinen was the youngest Finnish player to get a 300 in the traditional scoring way I believe when he was 12 yes yeah, pretty impressive as was that strike from the Korean nice. MG is motoring along nicely 146 from six frames here in the first Puharinen is playing catch up. Smash, have some of that. Blow for blow. Strike there from the fin. Takes him to 146. Shaping up nicely this boys' masters final. We've already seen a goal today for Team USA in the girls' doubles final. A gold for Korea in the boys' doubles final side which featured Guan Ji. Can he add to that gold medal here in the boys masters final? Just ahead of this the girls masters champion was crowned Sorry Hong of Korea. A fellow countryman here in action. Didn't quite nip into the pocket. No he was up off the shot early on that one. I think he knew that it was not going to strike. So now it's all back in the hands of the Finn. He strikes, he goes ahead. Nice early exchanges between these two little ebbs, little flows. Both players taking the chance to take an early lead, but then surrendering it. This to regain the lead. Release looked good. Oh, not quite what it needed. It was a good throw, actually. Not much technically wrong with it. Bowling is one of the only sports that has an invisible playing field. We can't see the oil on the lane, but it does move around and the players do have to make adjustments each shot and under the TV lights and the heat in this building, the oil will be moving around and the players do have to make small adjustments to keep the ball in the pocket. 
Some rather major adjustments too, because the majority of the tournament was played at the Plaza Saint-Maxime near Paris. So just outside the main city, and now we've moved in to the Institut de Judo. A spare there for Puharinen. Yes, completely different atmosphere in this building, but the players have adjusted very well. It seems to be an extra bit of tension to this one. The crowd cemented to their seats, glued to the big screens and watching the action live. Left-handed Korean, let's rip. And oh, a little wobble there of the seven pin, but it stays standing. It's another glimmer of light for Puharinen. Here he is in the eighth frame. Ten frames per game. He's currently on 165. 225 will be his max. Like for like, but this time it's the 10 pin that stays a uh, huge groan yeah, both, around the whole of Paris. Yeah, both players have left what's arguably the hardest pin for the hand that you use, left handers, the seven pin, this corner pin is hardest. And for the right handers, the opposite corner. Or well, not so hard there as Guan Ji just polishes it up. Made light work of the seven. Smell you later. See if the pin can follow suit. Big shot, this one. Big moment. Perfect. Still all level. All to play for in the first game. On as even as we go into the ninth. One eight four. Pur Puharinen. Who's going to blink first? Twenty nineteen World Junior Bowling Championships coming to you live from Paris. It's the Boys Masters Final: Korea versus Finland, Guan versus Puharinen. Guan Chi lets it go and gets the strike. Maximum points for him there. Another thirty in the can. Takes him to 2 1 4, one frame left for him. So a maximum of 2 4 4 achievable for the Korean. Another 60 points available here, too, for the Finn. The pressure's always on the player going second when they both know they need to strike. The players know exactly what they need to do. Oh, he's left it wide, started it too far right, didn't get enough of a swing in. He needs to spare, and it looks like it's going to be the Korean that takes the lead in the first game. It's a cruel game. It's not over yet. Must get the spare, though. Yep, to stand any chance, he has to spare this. Or he'll be relying on the Korean to open the frame. on target it's the best he could do from that situation and now if the young Korean here just 17 years of age can throw down another strike he will take the first game and the advantage here in the boys masters final She goes, and there she goes. Knocks down all ten, and will take the first game. So Junji of Korea finishes with two four four, and that's the end of that chapter. It is, but the coach, Finnish guy, Finnish coach, and Finnish player are having a discussion, make a plan, maybe a ball change. What can he learn here in the? final frame he obviously can't win the game from here no but he's picked up another ball and it'll have a different motion down the lane and he'll try and get an early reaction on the ball so he can go through the pins better so many 
components to think about. All about bringing them together, and he does. Excellent strike from the Finn. So, what? Final little tweak, that final change, taking him to 2 3 1, but not enough to take the first game. The Korean leads by one game to zero. So, and Andy, any observations from that first game? What assessments have you made? What can you bring to the table? What can you educate a, a slightly newer audience, perhaps, to the, uh, to the world of bowling? Well, the, it's it, like in any sport, it's about repetition, and the Korean is repeating shots. He's not had to make any adjustments. The Finn has had to come in and change ball. He looks like he's got a better ball motion on this ball now. Needs to start up earlier. Perhaps can't see it on the TV screens, but the ball needs to start up its motion earlier so it could go through the pins better. Perfect result, as it was at the end in the 10th frame of the first game. The first frame of the second game is a perfect score for the Finn too. I was just yep. thinking, Andy, how many balls do they travel with and how much does that cost to lug these things all the way around the world? So they've come from Finland, from Korea, from Colombia, from all across the world. They'll bring anything up to 12 balls to a championship event like this. And yes, it's very expensive to ship the balls around the world. We have that experience as well, but 12, between 9 and 12. Bit square on, bit flat on, fortunately takes down that 10 pin. He needed that because he would have had a really awful split there to contend with. He knows he was lucky when that 10 pin fell. He can't quite look at the audience. Yeah, the balls will have different textures, different materials and they'll react differently on the lane. They won't use all 12 balls, but they'll be able to pick from them throughout the event. Oh, much better this in the second game from Puharinen. Although he did start in a similar fashion in the first game, didn't he? Two perfect strikes at the start of the first game to give himself the lead, but then just a little bit of pressure right at the death toppled him from winning that first game. Oh, that's not good enough. No, he now has a quite a sizable lead now. Pressure's back on the young Korean. I guess it's about being relentless in these sort of situations and driving home that advantage. Yep, we just said that the Co Korean had been repeating all week and then commentator's curse goes up and blows it. I think he'll hold you personally responsible for that one, Andy. We'll send him your email details. Thank you. <laughs> right, this for a three-bagger. Let's see if we can get three in a row. Just stops this whole process and we'll start again. A little distraction there coming from in amongst the crowd, possibly. I guess we're then playing on the psychological factor that, or the, that what it takes to be a, a professional athlete Absolutely. at any age. Absolutely. and indeed his go. Ah. But everybody thought it was a noise. Everybody's quiet now. You can hear a pin drop. Or ten. Yes. Ten pins dropping there, there for Guan Ji. And he's back to striking ways. So a little flutter there in the second frame of this second game. And the Finn will get his chance. Can he follow suit? Yes, he can. Three in a row for the Finn, who's on absolute fire here. And pressing home that small advantage that he has. Three from three. Well, we did say he was the first player to have a 300 in Finland. Maybe he's going to be the first one for the World Junior Championships in the arena. Don't tease us. Don't tease us. That would be amazing to see. I've only ever seen one live. I've seen plenty on there. Uh, on YouTube and on social media, but yeah, only one in the flesh. Off she goes again. Same result. Clawing his way back. 98 the score from four frames. 
there was a 300 in the uh, singles event in the final of the singles and it was from that man Junji boom down comes the house and 120 a perfect score so far from four frames for Purinen it's the perfect response to going one down they both seem to have found their rhythm in this second game. They both seem to be finding their stride. Yeah, they've settled into it now. Dispatched any early nerves. Here comes the 17-year-old left-hander from Korea. Good delivery and finds the pocket. Mamma mia, indeed. One, two, eight. about here in the first game but the Finn just lost his way a little Let's see if he can maintain that concentration lay those gremlins to rest uh, too much rotation yep straight through the head pin and has left a fairly difficult spare I think he's going to get this. What makes you say that? It's it's not the hardest spare, but uh, I just have a feeling, just a gut feeling, he's not going to give up this title. Yeah, he's made it all the way to the final. Purinen needs to get the spare here. Oh, didn't get that ricochet that he needed. So that should bring things a little bit closer here was the mistake that Bunji was hoping for which narrows the gap now and he has a chance to dominate again from the front. Sixth frame, one two eight currently halfway through this second game with Guanji leading having taken the first game. The Finn is only ahead by one pin now in this game. monster absolute monster roll that one <laughs> he likes it just quietly calmly nodding to himself knows he's got the game to deliver here win in this game of course for the Korean would give him the title yes as we've said before he has been dominant all week he's a super player super young man as well very respectful more like it Finland back on track Pur Purinen of Finland gets another maximum score there in the six takes him to 159 well, this one is going to the wire four frames remaining in the second with the Korean leading by game to nil approach slow and steady and that's where the work's been done the rotations on the ball take down another 10 pins it's another 40 points in the can for Guanji of Korea 188 and the Finn just waiting for his ball here Not really what he needs at this stage. Right, he's doing the right thing, coming off the stage and... Seems to have gone MIA, missing in action. <laughs> what did they used to do back in the day before the mechanical lanes? They would have had to walk the balls back up, I guess, Andy? Yeah, they still they had a, a gravity-fed system and their ball boys at the back, they used to set the pins and then they'd set the balls back down on the ball lift. There is a slight delay in proceedings here. There is one ball that emerged and a second. Uh, hopefully not too much more of a, a disturbance to the rhythm of these players. They've settled in nicely in this 
second game, a game which the Finn must win if he stands any chance of getting his hands on that gold medal. The boys' Masters final in full swing. The Korean leading by one game to love. Guan Ji up, but the Finn to throw next. And the Finn has a one pin lead in this game. Let's see if he can maintain it. This has been his preferred ball, the one that's been doing the damage, the one that's been delivering the strikes. Sphere with a knife. Good. He's too wide. Looked like he set that one off too wide. Yep, didn't recover. And he's lost his lead, but if he spares this, it won't be too far behind. Still within striking distance. I think you're right, it's not a total disaster, not yet, but the form that Guan Ji has shown throughout this week and his composure, I guess, in this final is the difference between the two from what I can see. Yes, he's a very composed young man, breathing, very important. Control your emotions by your breathing. And well, that still had a bit of work to do, but finding the right line on that occasion. Purinen of Finland, 178 his score, three frames remaining. He knows that it was a missed opportunity. 188 now the lead for Guanji of Korea. All about just holding it steady and firm. Again, a hush descends on the Institut de Judo in Paris. Absolutely clatters into the pins, and it's another perfect score for the Korean. Well on his way here. 218. He has a 10-pin lead now. The Finn has to strike. Yeah, you can see there that reflected in the scores. 178. Needs to deliver another perfect score here. We take him to 208. That's it loose, but again it was the wrong line. Again, a little wobble of the 10, but yeah, really just not executing. Frustration, you can see it. It's just etched in his body language. Head is slightly slumped now. That was a very important shot. I think he may think that his chance at the title may have gone with that one, but it's still still not over yet. Junji still needs to make at least one strike out of the next two to shut him out. But he must make this spare. Unfortunately, misses that one, leaves the 10, so that could well be curtain to strike here, should seal the deal for Wang Ji. So 187, can only add another maximum 60 points to that with two remaining strikes, and well, the Korean already on 218. Doesn't look concerned at all. Maximum of 278 available for the young Korean who's already won a gold medal in the boys' doubles. Can he get a result here in the boys' masters? It's dominated all week, in fact. And no, seven pins still there, but that should be enough with the spare here, I think. Yes, if he spares, it will be all over. But maybe the Finn, maybe if he strikes and puts some pressure on. Come on then, it's now or never. Finish big, finish with that strike. That's what he needs to stay in contention, and he does. Great shot. Well, the pressure was on there. 2 1 7. Well, needs, of course, the Korean to fluff his lines here. From what we've seen all week. Should be bang on target. And is smashes into the backboard and takes him to 237. So a 217 there for the Finn. 
maximum he can get is 2-4-7. Then it is out of his control. It really is. He has to strike now, and then he has to rely on a young Korean <laughs> friend to open. Yeah. Which or chucking it down the gutter. Yeah, hasn't done that often. So definitely a strike needed. He's being urged on by the coach. He's going to fall short there. Leaves the spare, but that does mean that Guan Ji will take home another gold medal here in Paris. Just needs to round things off here. Let's see if he can finish with a strike. Already on, 2-3-7. The crowd getting behind him now. He knows he's got the gold medal in that back pocket and finishes with a strike as well, which they love, and he loves too. Game, set, and match. Guanji of Korea finishes with 2-6-7 and defeats Pur Purinen of Finland by two games to love. The Finn just sending his final ball down to collect the spare and adds that to his score tally as well. So an interesting final, a fascinating final, but Korea coming out on top again, as they have done all week here, really. Another victory for them and for Guanji in the boys' Masters final. Andy, let's just get your final thoughts on that one before we switch our attention to the team match, which is still to come today. Well, Guanji has been dominant all week. He's won the singles, he's won the doubles, he's won the Masters, he's won the all events. All he needs now is the win in the team for a complete clean sweep in a gold medal in every event. It'd be a fantastic achievement.